Optography is the process of viewing or retrieving an optogram, an image on the retina of the eye. A belief that the eye recorded the last image seen before death was widespread in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and was a frequent plot device in fiction of the time, to the extent that police photographed the victim's eyes in several real-life murder investigations, in case the theory was true. The concept has been repeatedly debunked as a forensic method. Scientific Basis Much of the scientific work on optography was performed by the German physiologist Wilhelm Kuhn. Inspired by Franz Christian Boll's discovery of rhodopsin, or visual purple, a photosensitive pigment present in the rods of the retina Kuhn discovered that, under ideal circumstances, the rhodopsin could be fixed like a photographic negative. Kuhn experimented on numerous animals to refine the process and determine the chemicals used to fix the image on the retina. His most successful optogram was obtained from an albino rabbit, with its head fastened to face a barred window. The rabbit's head was covered for several minutes to allow rhodopsin to accumulate on the retina. It was then uncovered for three minutes to expose it to the light, then decapitated and its eyeball sliced from top to bottom. The rear half of the eye was placed in an alum solution to enable fixation of the bleached rhodopsin, which resulted in a distinct image of the barred windows. Optography in the Human Eye Kun was eager to demonstrate the technique in a human subject, and in 1880, got the opportunity. On November 16, Erhard Gustav Reif was executed by guillotine for the murder of his children in the nearby town of Bruxelles. Reef's eyes were extracted and delivered to Kuhn's laboratory at the University of Heidelberg, where he set about dissecting them in a darkened room with filtered windows. After ten minutes, Kuhn showed his colleagues an image on the left retina, however his sketch of the image did not appear to match any object visible to the subject at the time of his death although the outline of the image resembled a guillotine blade, Reef was blindfolded at the time of his beheading. An issue that Kun encountered when attempting to produce an image from a human eye is that the size of the fovea centralis, the actual focal point of the image on the retina, is very small, about 1.5 mm. Kun had considerably more success producing optograms from animals such as rabbits and frogs, and the reef image ended up being the only known human optogram. The original image from reef's eye no longer exists apart from a simple line drawing of the shape in Kuhn's 1881 paper Observations for Anatomy and Physiology of the Retina. Forensic Optography With the theory that the eye retained an image at the moment of death rampant in the Victorian imagination, police investigators in the late 1800s began considering optography as an investigative technique in murder cases. One of the earliest known attempts at forensic optography occurred in 1877, when Berlin police photographed the eyes of murder victim Frau von Sabitsky, on the chance that the image would assist in solving the crime. In 1888, London police officer Walter Du later known for catching the murderer Dr. Crippen recalled optography being attempted on Mary Jane Kelly in what he called a forlorn hope of catching her suspected killer, Jack the Ripper. Ripperologist James Stuart Gordon believed the technique was attempted on Annie Chapman as well. W.C. Ayres, an American physician who assisted Kuhn in his laboratory and translated his papers into English, dismissed the theory that optography on a human eye could yield a usable image for forensic purposes. In an 1881 article in the New York Medical Journal, Ayres stated that his own repeated experiments in the field had produced some optogram images, but they were not distinct enough to be useful, and he declared it utterly idle to look for the picture of a man's face or of the surroundings, on the retina of a person who has met with a sudden death, even in the most favorable circumstances. A rare case of forensic optography being admitted as evidence occurred in late 1924, after German merchant Fritz Angerstein had been charged with killing eight members of his family and household staff. Dunny, a professor at the University of Cologne photographed the retinas of two of the victims, yielding what he claimed were images of Angerstein's face and an axe used to kill the gardener. Angerstein was tried, convicted, and executed, with Dunny's optographic images included amongst other evidence in the case. According to the Sunday Express newspaper, when told of the incriminating optograms, Angerstein confessed to the murders. 
the American Mercury magazine called Dunny's testimony scientific confirmation of the theory of optography, although in 2011, the German legal tribune online called the use of optographic evidence in the Angerstein case absurdi criminalistic, absurd forensics. The most recent serious research into the use of optography in criminology occurred in 1975, when police in Heidelberg asked Evangelis Alexandridis at the University of Heidelberg to reevaluate Kuhn's experiments and findings with modern scientific techniques, knowledge, and equipment. Like Kuhn, Alexandridis successfully produced a number of distinct high contrast images from the eyes of rabbits, but conclusively negatively assessed the technique as a forensic tool. Optography in Fiction The first apparent description of optography in fiction was in Augusta Villers de L.I. Laddam's 1867 short story Claire Lenore, later expanded into the novel Tribulat Bonhomet in 1887. Like the reference in Rudyard Kipling's 1891 short story At the End of the Passage, Villers de L.I. Laddam's story portrays the optogram in a metaphysical sense, rather than scientific. Jules Verne's 1902 novel, Les Frères Kip, The Brothers Kip, contains a reference to optography as a key plot point. The Kip brothers of the title are arrested and imprisoned for the murder of a ship's captain. When the victim's son examines an enlarged photograph of his late father's head, he discerns in the eyes the faces of the true murderers two of the captain's shipmates and the brothers are exonerated. Verne explained the scientific basis of the conclusion in the book's final chapter. For some time now it has been known as a result of various interesting ophthalmological experiments done by certain ingenious scientists, authoritative observers that they are that the image of exterior objects imprinted upon the retina of the eye are conserved there indefinitely. The organ of vision contains a particular substance, retinal purple, on which is imprinted in their exact form these images. They have even been perfectly reconstituted when the eye, after death, is removed and soaked in an alum bath. The 1936 Universal film The Invisible Ray features a scene in which Dr. Felix Bennett, Bella Lugosi, uses an ultraviolet camera to photograph the dead eyes of Sir Francis Stevens, Walter Kingsford, who was murdered by Dr. Janos Rook, Boris Karloff. The image developed by Bennett shows Rook to be the killer, but Bennett drops the photographic plate, accidentally destroying the evidence. Italian filmmaker Dario Argento's 1971 film Four Flies on Grey Velvet has characters use optography in an attempt to catch a murderer, with the description of the resulting image lending the film its title. In the 1972 film Horror Express various unearthly murders aboard a trans-Siberian train are investigated with a couple of autopsies, during which it is discovered that images are retained in a liquid found inside the eyeball of the corpse which reveal a prehistoric Earth and a view of the planet seen from space and it is deduced that the threat is somehow a formless extraterrestrial that inhabited the body of the creature and now resides within a police inspector the intelligence can jump. From victim to victim via the eye leaving the eyeball white and opaque, like that of a boiled fish. In the 1975 Doctor Who serial The Ark in Space, the fourth doctor applies the theory with some of the ocular tissue of the alien Wyrn to project not just still images, but moving, video footage of the last moments of life of the Wyrn Queen thousands of years in the past. The doctor likens it to an old gypsy belief of the eye retaining the last image after death, something not too far from the truth. 38 years later, the 2013 Doctor Who episode The Crimson Horror, set in Victorian England, portrays the character of Madame Vastra dismissing the validity of optography, until shown an image of the 11th Doctor in a dead man's eye. The image is explained as having registered after the victim was submerged in a chemical substance which caused his eyes to retain a latent image. In the 1986 manga Saint Cia, there's an episode in which Icky receives a warning from Black Cygnus Eye. In the 1994 Robocop, the series, the first episode The Future of Law Enforcement Robocop takes an blurred image from corpse's retina and then enhances it using a computer. The 1999 film Wild Wild West features a scene where Artemis Gordon obtains a clue by projecting the optograms of a dead scientist onto a wall, much to the disgust of his colleague James West. In the 2008 series Fringe, the same old story, season 1 episode 2, 
Walter uses an optographic image taken from the optic nerve of a woman killed whilst under the effect of a paralytic toxin to track down and arrest her murderer. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.